Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome back. Today I am here to continue again the letter of Paul to the church in Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 mainly talks about the marriage. Yes, brothers and sisters, let's see what our brother Paul wants us to know about marriage. Marriage is not something we should take lightly. And Paul explains regarding about the marriage as a believer in Jesus Christ. We know it is not easy. Paul tried to explain Getting married does not necessarily mean the same thing as living happily ever after. Marriage just requires hard work and devotion in order to be strong. One another important factor in one healthy and happy marriage is a commitment to moral purity. In this passage, Paul gives us guidance toward the end. Underlying his instructions is an assumption that the husband and wife are in a committed, exclusive relationship that they took only to each other to meet their needs for intimacy. First, Paul says, the husband and wife are to meet each other's sexual needs. Notice how Paul's instructions exhort the people, exhort the couple to focus attention on the other's needs, not their own, a man whose sexual appetite is greater than his wife's might find such instructions a bit unsettling. After all, if he focuses on his wife, his sexual needs might go unmet. The sacrificial nature of the marriage relationship may call for these at times. But Paul's instructions not to deprive each other stand equally for both marriage partners. Second, the husband is to regard his body as belonging to his wife, and the wife is to do likewise. Sometimes men make the costly mistake of getting these backwards thinking that this passage calls their wives to be there for them. But look at Paul's instructions again. Neither the husband nor the wife is to think of the other as being there for them. Instead, they are both to view themselves as being there for their man. Third, a husband and wife need to take time to devote themselves to prayer. Paul lays out the ground rules for this time period. It should be maturely agreed upon. Its focus should be on prayer, not abstinence. It should also be short so that the increased sexual energy would not provide Satan with an opportunity to tame either spouse. The idea of voluntarily abstinence from sex within marriage may be new to you. Indeed, you may wonder why Paul would urge couples to paradically abstain from physical intimacy. 
Many couples find that following Paul's instructions helps to develop spiritual and emotional intimacy between partners. They see this as an exhortation for married couples to maintain a balance in their lives. They find that the transparency of prayer links them together on a member of levels, helping them find and maintain that delicate balance. The God-honoring marriage relationship encompasses all aspects of the couple's lives, physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual, and so on. Prayer between marriage partners dissolves battles. It creates emotional intimacy. It strengthens relationship. And it so doing brings partners closer together on all levels. Paul's instructions leave no room for spouses to ignore the needs of all their partners. They urge husbands to put their wives' needs before their own. And vice versa, a couple who demonstrates such sacrificial love will have made a good start on the journey toward living happily ever after. Hallelujah! These are some of the Paul's instructions regarding about the marriages. Corinthians chapter 7 Now for the matters you wrote about it is good for a man not to marry but since there is so much immorality its man should have his own wife and its women her own husband the husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Do not deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tame you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all men were as I am. But each man has his own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now, to the unmarried and the widows I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried, as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. To the married I give this command, not I, but the Lord. A wife must not separate from her husband, but if she does, she must remain unmarried, or else be reconciled to her husband. And a husband must not divorce his wife. To the rest I say this, I, not the Lord. If any brother has a wife who is not a believer and she is willing to live with him, he must not divorce her. And if a woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to live with her, she must not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband has been sanctified 
through his wife and the unbelieving wife has been sanctified through her believing husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean but as it is they are holy. But if the unbeliever lives let him do so. A believing man or woman is not bound in such circumstances. God has called us to live in peace. How do you know, wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, husband, whether you will save your wife? Never tell us. It's one should retain the place in life that the Lord assigned to him and to which God has called him. This is the rule I lay down in all the churches. Was a man already circumcised when he was called? He should not become uncircumcised. Was a man uncircumcised when he was called? He should not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing and uncircumcision is nothing. Keeping God's commands is what counts. It's one should remain in the situation which he was in what God called him. Were you a slave? When you a slave you were called. Don't let it trouble you also. If you can gain your freedom, if you can gain your freedom, do so. For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's free man. Similarly, he who was a free man when he was called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price, do not become slaves of man. Brothers, it's man as responsible to God, should remain in the situation God called him to. Now about virgins, I have no command from the Lord, but I give a judgment as one who by the Lord's mercy is trustworthy. Because of the present crisis, I think that it is good for you to remain as you are. Are you married? Do not seek a divorce. Are you unmarried? Do not look for a wife. But if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if and if a virgin marries, she has not sinned. But those who marry will face many troubles in this life. And I want to spare you this. What I mean, brothers, is that the time is short. From now on, those who have wives should live as if they have none. Those who mourn as if they did not, those who are happy as if they were not, those who buy something as if it were not theirs to keep, those who use the things of the world as if not and grows in them. For this world in its present form is passing away. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife. And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs, 
Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world, how she can please her husband. I am saying this for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way, in undivided devotion to the Lord. If anyone thinks he is acting improperly toward the Virgin, he is engaged to, and if she is getting along in years and years, feels he ought to marry, he should do as he wants. He is not sinning, they should get married. But the man who has settled the matter in his own mind, who is under no compulsion, but has control over his own will, and who has made up his mind not to marry the virgin. This man also does the right thing. So then, he who marries the virgin does right, but he who does not marry her does even better. A woman is bound to her husband as long as he lives, but if her husband dies, she is free to marry anyone she wishes. But he must belong to the Lord. In my judgment, she is happier if she stays as she is. And I think that I do have the Spirit of God. Hallelujah! Thank God. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you for coming. May the Lord bless you through the reading of these scriptures. Thank you and you guys have a great time. I love you and God loves you too.